fans of Warhammer 40,000, the Adeptus Sororitas, and vicariously enjoying models that shred your fingers to build, thank you very much for joining me for a build and model review of something a little bit unusual and different for me. And what we are going to be looking at today is, well, uh, this model. And this is the Penitent Engine from the Sisters of Battle Range. And as you all have no doubt already deduced, this is uh, the, what I believe was the original version produced in uh, Games Workshop Pewter. And this went out of production last year, shortly before the release of the new Plastic Sisters range. What I've been doing is I've been building this as a commission piece. Um, from a mate of mine, Office Painter. Well, I finished it, so I thought I'd share the miniature with you because it is very interesting. And yeah, also just talk a little bit about the build experience because that was, um, well, something to be remembered, shall we say. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take you around the Penitent engine itself. I'm going to show off its details. I'm then going to talk about the build process and how I approached it. So although these are out of production now, I suspect there's two possibilities that that information could be of interest to you. Firstly, you might buy one and want to build one. And secondly, you might own one and it could have been sat in your stash, basically intimidating you so you don't dare build it. So perhaps I might be able to give you some useful advice in tackling the build, the assembly, because these things are infamous for falling apart with good reason. So I'm going to talk about the build. Once I've done that, I'll then make a couple of size comparisons just against uh, another walker of its age and an infantry model so we can get a feel for its size. Yeah, so uh, let's... Uh, that's gotten in. This model is mounted on a round 60 millimeter base. And as I said, it is made from Games Workshop lead free pewter. So although the lead free pewter was a lot lighter than the leaded white metal Games Workshop used back in the 80s and early 90s, it is still a weighty model and it, it must weigh a couple of hundred grams. So it feels good in the hand, well, apart from all the spikiness. Let's have a little look around the design. So first thing that strikes me, it's got these digigrade limbs. Um, so they're not very human-like at all. Contrast that with a Space Marine Dreadnought, for example. The, it has two large, rather vicious looking appendages which is attached to a rotary saw blade and a heavy flamer. So these things are clearly well armed. Center stage in the miniature is the pilot. And I use the term pilot in the loosest possible sense because the pilot is a penitent, or in another way to look at it, they are a terrible heretic in some way to the Imperium. And as punishment for their transgressions, they have been surgically hardwired and drugged up to their eyeballs and slapped on one of these things and released upon the enemy in a rage of repentant, penitent fury. And of course, that's tapping into the themes, some of the thematic concepts of the Sisters of Battle. The detail on this model is absolutely exceptional. As you can see, if we're going in close, the penitent itself has all of these cables and wires attaching them to the engine. Uh, interestingly, the penitent just is slapped full on, exposed to fire. There's no armor protection and not even semi-armor protection in the same way you get with a sentinel. They have no armor. They are purely relying on the faith of the emperor to protect them. So yes, his and the Emperor's redemption and forgiveness. Another reoccurring theme of this miniature is lots of purity seals, I suppose they would be, and those are attached all over the machine. Clearly, if you are going to house a dirty, filthy heretic like the Penitent, you need a lot of purity seals to make sure corruption doesn't spread. Very good. I guess another sort of common theme of this miniature is 
it is very sharp and spiky. It's all angles, edges, and spikes. And, you know, to hold it, it's, a, it's a, wow, sometimes, you know, some of these things, combined with the fact that the metal is so hard, it's almost like the design of a model reflects its painful nature, if I need of a better phrase. The legs and the arms are single piece. You can mount them any way round, so you can have, you know, stepping forward. The arms can go on either side. Although I think the arms fit best this way around because you have this skull detail on the upper arm, and that isn't repeated on the inside, as you can see there, and just about here. I think it goes best this way around. I suppose you could always add a skull motif to these inside sections if you wanted that detail with the arms reversed. So yeah, a thought there. But lots and lots of lovely details. And this model very much is the Adeptus Soritus' answer to a dreadnought, but conceptually it's almost like an anti-dreadnought if you think about it in terms of the pilot. So with a dreadnought, a honoured, revered hero is a permanently interred pilot, whereas here you have a, a heretic to the Empire being punished for their sins. So an interesting contextual contrast there. One uh, feature or one area of detail I really like with this miniature is the power plant here. And it's probably some sort of, well, it seems to be some sort of combustion unit. Who knows? The tech in 40K is so far removed from the modern day. But it has this absolutely lovely exhaust stack with a little flipper on the top of it. I don't know what the correct name for a little exhaust stack flipper, but basically when exhaust is flowing out, it lifts up and when it isn't, it drops down. Uh, and I think that stops rain and other particulates entering the exhaust stack itself. It just, it's very anachronistic as a look on it. So it looks like something off a steam engine or an old tractor. Yeah, really cool. The kit is supplied with two different penitents. So we have this one, which is clearly a female penitent. So perhaps a shamed sister, a grievously shamed sister of battle. But you also get a second one. And me being me, rather than just build it with one, I thought, well, let's uh, have a go with some magnets. And with a bit of extra work, we can take this guy who is a male, yes, a male penitent. Uh, so equal opportunities penitence in the Grim Dark 40k. And these are 3 by 2 millimeter N52 grade neodymium magnets. And just very satisfyingly, we can attach them on there. And I spent many, many minutes just playing with this, um, going back and forth. So yeah, it's very satisfying to be able to do that. Uh, it does make a great noise. The whole thing being made out of the pewter, it just has the most wonderful ting to it. So while I'm not a big fan of this material because of how hard it is to work with, um, once built, it is quite nice once it's built. It feels very solid. Yes, so that is the miniature. You also have all a tabard here uh, with more purity seals, a tassel. Actually, no, it's not a tassel, it's a skull. And there's a few of these hanging skull motifs repeated around the miniature. I think there is anyway. Yeah, maybe that's the only one. Oh, even another skull on top of the exhaust stack. No, maybe that was the only one. Yeah. A, a great looking model. And quite poseable as well. If you can get past the challenge of putting these together, and if you're wanting for a, uh, like a professional finish for a paint job, cleaning them up, it is a fantastic miniature. Right, on that point, let's now just talk a bit about the build process. So the kit is supplied, and it comes in quite a few parts. The limbs are single parts, as I said. The two penitents, are both single part. 
for the smokestack is a separate part on its own. The hip and waist assemblies are part. And then the torso is made up of four components, which is two side plates, uh, which house the shoulder blocks, as you can see, a uh, what we call, call a forward torso, or the main torso perhaps, which is this component here. And then on the back, we have the power pack. And those four parts going together make the torso up like that. And yeah, the there is a reasonably well-designed location uh, set of location lugs to and mount the penitent in place, although I will talk a bit about that. What's this thing like to build? Let me start off by talking about actually cleaning up a model like this. These things are, the only way I can describe this model to clean up, and when I mean clean up, I'm talking removing all of the casting lines. And this model had a lot. It didn't just have a lot, the design makes it very difficult to work around. She's got so many sharp angles and corners. To remove all those was days of hobby work and my hobby time. It took quite a long time to do. And the main reason for that, part of it is the actual design of the model, but the main reason is the pewter this is cast from is very hard and it, it just takes a long time to sand stuff down, clean things away. You know, there's no easy shortcuts I've ever come across or thought up yet for cleaning this up. So yeah, the cleanup was hard work. However, once that's done, moving on to the assembly. Now, the torso, I had to do some work to get it to fit together properly. And the main issue was around here. You can't see it now because it's glued together, but I had to remove some material inside here, which is kind of where this little purity seal is just hiding there. And I had to remove that to get everything to fit together square and true and to not have a gap between the torso and the power pack uh, where they join. So there was that took a bit of, I wouldn't necessarily say it was difficult, but it did take a bit of trial and error uh, to figure out where the excess material was to cut that down and then be able to locate it. So yeah, that's really cool that. I'm pleased with that. Now, the next bit. So once I'd got the torso sorted out, I then had to consider mounting the penitent. Now, there was a, what I can only really think of being as a bit of a design oversight. And I'll tell you what it is in case you've got one of these to build. You can, can you see these rivets here? And they're repeated on each side. Now, the rivets ran all along here. So there was a row of rivets, so there's another three on each side. Oops, sorry, I've just lost focus there. With those in place, the penitent, the penitent, the penitent wouldn't fit. So what I ended up doing was cutting three of those away, which was to make space for these bits here. So these lugs could go in. And then I did sand these lugs down a little bit. As you can see from these bright areas here, I had to take some material away to facilitate a nice, uh, easy fit, like so, and like so. Once those rivets were removed, everything went together very well. And as you can see from the plan view, it's all very true and everything looks square. And as I believe it was designed to fit. If I'd not taken those rivets away, the shoulder blocks, the plates would have been sort of splayed out a bit like that. I'm exaggerating slightly, but it would have been like that. And that would have then affected how the end model looked. So that was that little challenge addressed and overcome. The next thing was the smokestack. This has a sort of tongue and groove bit here. It's not a particularly strong join, particularly given it's a flat little attachment here. So I put a pin into it. When I was doing that pin, I came across one of the perennial bugbears of um, pinning a pewter model, and I broke one of my drills. It doesn't matter in the drill because they're relatively cheap, I've got loads. But I did then have to drill a second hole beside it uh, to get the pin in. So one of my drills, bless it, is permanently part of the smokestack. Rest in peace drill.
Now moving on to the rest of the model. So all the remaining joints needed work. The two shoulders I put a one millimeter piano wire pin into. I did the same into the waist joint. I used 0.3 millimeter piano wire on the ankles. And I carefully drilled a pin that probably extends about, uh, say between my two thumbs there. So it goes almost down to the heel and well up into the ankle. And that's because the actual ankles themselves are quite thin. Those could easily bend if it's got pushed over. And the pewter metal isn't as ductile as some other, as say the old white metal. So if it bent over and you bent it back, it could weaken to the point where basically it's gonna snap off. So that's why I did those reinforcements on the ankles. I then did a second set of pins, again using 0.3 millimeter piano wire to pin the feet into the base. They were super glued in place. I stuck the ankles first, then stuck the feet last actually, but oh, as we're at this end of the model, I'll just show you now. The hips, now the hips, right, so I've got to tell you a little bit about this. The fit on the hips wasn't very affirmative and you can probably see there was a fair bit of wiggle room. There's probably a good millimeter, maybe a bit more. And what I did to try and get a nice, well, there's two challenges with this. First, it was having a, the, it wasn't a very strong attachment to stick. And then the second was just making it look right because I believe those pins are supposed to be centered on the joint more or less. And it'd have been hard to stick those in place without a spacer. So what I did is I got some resin off cuts and I just stuck a couple of spacers onto the upper and lower side of each pin and then filed them down until they fit. Until, and then I ended up with a really snug fit. And what I then did is I used some fast acting epoxy glue. Uh, in this case, it was Aerodite fast acting. You can use any like that to stick this and this in place. Once that had dried, I then filled in the remaining recess with some super glue. And that gave a joint that short of really severe abuse won't break. The other thing I did was on the pins for the hips, which run right the way through, uh, this is the model pins, I didn't pin this bit. I sanded some grooves into the pin with, uh, because they're cylindrical and sanding those grooves into it it just gives a glue somewhere to grab and it prevents any rotation occurring in the future. I always over-engineer my metal builds because these models, if, you did, if they did get knocked or even slightly dropped, they can easily break. For the sort of work I'm doing, I like to build things so they'll last. So that was my particular solution to that. The remaining parts, which I think was just the arms, as I say, I did a one millimeter thick piano wire pin on both sides and then I super glued those in position. And I also super glued the waist joint, which again has a one millimeter pin, probably about that deep running through it. Very good. The end model feels very strong to me and short of outrageously rough handling or being dropped quite significantly, this thing isn't going to break. Excellent stuff. Let's do a couple of size comparisons. I think we're going to switch back to the original penitent again. So there we go, she's back. Okay, firstly, let's do a size comparison against an infantry model. So here we have, I haven't got a sister of battle, but what I have got is, I've got this fella. And this is a Horus Heresy miniature. This is a word bearer. Sniper, well, a word bearer vigilator. It's a scratch build. This is a model that was done for me by Office Painter, who this is for. This is a really cool guy. He's scratch built out of all sorts of parts. And there's some quite trolley little references here. Have a look at this model and uh, tell me where you think this guy's got all of his war gear from. And he did a lovely job with this cape as well. This is a reasonably good indicator of a infantry model to compare this against size-wise. And not quite as tall as a Primaris Marine, but about there. So yes, the Penitent engine is a big old beastie. And it's probably more than twice the height of a Marine. 
including the smokestack, it's maybe three times. If it was stood fully upright, it would be even taller still. But the way the legs are cast doesn't really allow you to do that. But if it was stood fully upright, it'll probably like uh, add another centimeter, centimeter and a half onto it, the sort of size comparison. And although these two models are separated by thousands of years in the uh, law, I would certainly imagine this thing coming after this guy with some vigor. Okay, now let me make a comparison against a walker of the similar age and also a walker of the similar sort of material. And this is a Castroferrum Dreadnought. If you've watched my video on the evolution of 40k Dreadnoughts, you'll recognize this fella from that one. So yeah, it's a, it's a chunky beast. Most of this is made out of the same lead-free pewter, so <laughs> I had a similar amount, although not quite as much pain building and preparing this as I did with that one. I think these two are a really interesting comparison, aside from the fact they are of a similar design age in effect. I mean, this is more recent than that, but it is still from a similar sort of era in terms of GW uh, thematic design, but look at the difference between them. The Space Marine Dreadnought, it's very compact, it's heavily armored, everything, well, being distinctly imperial in look. It's got quite a, you know, a compact, contained, sophisticated look. The Penitent Engine, by contrast, it, it just looks absolutely nuts. There's cables everywhere, there's, there's all these crazy angled spikes, more purity seals than you can shake a stick at, and the contrast in the pilots is you know, obviously it can't be more marked, can it? You have the internal sarcophagus of the marine hero against the displayed penitent. But that said, there is still an interesting comparison in the style because the marine's sarcophagus has all these cables running into it. Obviously this is his control and life support equipment. With the penitent, we have a, a mirroring of this sort of cable bed of cables let's say and i think it's a subtle similarity but a nice one nonetheless and i guess the other thing is much bulkier squat marine design taller more gangly less heavily built psoriatas machine yeah great contrast two very cool models even if building them will uh, make your hands unhappy so I think that's all I have to say about the metal and now out of production Adeptus Seritis Penitent Engine by Games Workshop. Quite a fascinating model. Not something that I necessarily will ever build again. It was a very hard piece of work to build this. It was not easy. And when you think about the experiences I've shared with you with models I've built over the years, I hope you can appreciate that, sir. <laughs> quite something I'm saying there. I mean, fundamentally speaking, there's nothing wrong with the model, apart from perhaps those uh, rivets um, on the shoulder plates. Even those could be easily fixed, but you know, it, it's a well-designed model. It's really poseable and it looks fantastic. The only thing that works against it is the difficulty of cleaning the material up and the extra work that you need to put into it and to get the strength so it's not going to collapse later on. So if you just stuck this with super glue, I suspect it could be quite easily broken, you know, without pins and epochs in certain places. I suppose it's a product of its age. And of course, now we have plastic versions of the Penitent engine that were released as part of the new Seratus range at the end of last year, which are also, you know, great models. A slight shift in some of the design themes, but essentially they're still the same thing and far, far easier to build. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video looking at this fascinating miniature. As always, I'll be very interested to hear what you girls and boys have got to say in the comment section. So please do share your thoughts. In particular, if you've built one, and particularly if you built one to say the standard for a professional painting competition, how did you find the cleanup? Did you have any tricks? Or was it just a case of grinning and bearing, doing all that work? As always, I'll be very interested here. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.